I've come full circle, back to where my investigation began. Today is a big day. Time is running out. I'm on my way to the public prosecutor's office in Kaohsiung. And right now, I feel like I'm at my last option. And it's one that it was going to have to happen anyway. And that is to go to the authorities. But unlike last time, where I had nothing but theories, now I'm here with statements, with photos, with all sorts of intel. Six months ago, my investigation started with a video on YouTube showing four brutal killings on the high seas. I found out the ship it was recorded from. Shooting ship. It's this one here. It's called the Ping Shin 101. I've put names to the victims. You were able to identify this man. I tracked down witnesses. Did you kill anyone that day? No. And uncovered a crucial name. Wang Feng Yu, Captain Hoodlum. I can't do this on my own. I mean, no matter how far I can get, I need authorities behind me to back me up and to make this an official investigation, because that's the only way that these people are going to be brought to justice. So I'm playing that final card now. I'm off to the public prosecutor's office here in Taiwan, and that is the highest level. And I hope that that authority will take this seriously. And if I announce that I know what's happened, I won't tell them what happened, but I know what exactly took place, I'm hoping that they'll be willing to cooperate with me. It's time to bring this investigation to a close. Because the Ping Shin 101 was registered here, the Taiwanese authorities are the people to involve. But will they take me seriously? I just conveyed to the spokesman for the public prosecutor that we have valuable information on a case that involved a murder which occurred four years ago and involved Taiwanese vessels. But before he could even conceptualize what we were talking about, he said that if this is a case that's under the investigation of the public prosecutor's office, there's absolutely no way that it can be collaborated with or shared with the public, flat out. Then. We said, well, maybe we should discuss this off the record because we can help you with very valuable information. And he then outright said, no, even if someone else is investigating this, we do not need outside help. So in four years, nothing has happened. They don't even want to see what I've got to offer. But I'm not done yet. One piece of my investigation is still missing. Motive. If I can establish that, the prosecutors may decide to take a second look. I need to find Captain Hoodlum. I reach out to a local investigator. This is one of our main players, Wang Fang Yu, captain of the Pingxin 101, at the time of the mass killings. 
Uh, apparently very distinguishable. Dragon tattoo on the left arm, but he's got tats on the right arm as well. The other thing is he's very young. Most of these long landing captains are 50s and 60s, but he's late 30s. And being a mainland Chinese, I'm wondering how hard could it be to track this guy down? Uh, I would say very likely, because uh, this will be a very rare situation for Taiwanese visionary uh, business, because a 30-something uh, guy from mainland China to be a captain of uh, maybe 700 tons fishing vessels, uh, I would say very rare. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, how many Wang Fang Yus are there in the mm -hmm. mainland of China? There will be quite some. Could there be any way that he's here in Taiwan? For now, we can't be sure, but uh, we can try to do some confirmation of this. OK. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a waiting game. During the investigation, I looked at many possible motives for the shootings. Look at this boat coming in, and instead of fishermen, there are killers on board. None of those theories fit. I still have so many unanswered questions. There are still pieces of this puzzle missing. Hoodlum is the only one who can explain why the guards on his ship open fire. After a sleepless night, I get a message from my local contacts. They've covered a lot of ground and have news on Hoodlum. Okay, wait, let me try to recap this one. Um, okay, so your operative has went to the village uh, which is about four yeah. hours southeast of Shanghai. Uh, they then yeah. went to the address that is listed to, to Wang Feng Yu, correct? Yeah. They've got a picture of where he lives. But... But the person is not uh, in the village right now, so they go to uh, the police station of uh, the village and talk to the police. All right, if there is a way that your operatives, if they can please get some details, maybe from neighbors and so on, uh, to find out how long he's been gone for and, um, and mm -hmm. when he's expected to be back, and also how long has he mm -hmm. lived at these addresses. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Speak soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. I can't believe it. I've pursued this man for months, halfway across the world. Oh, I feel drained. According to the police, he's not there. He's on a fishing boat. And he's away, overseas. And if he's back out to sea, he's a ghost. He's off the grid. That's going to be a massive, massive problem. I decide to leave Taiwan and head 550 miles back to another key location in my investigation, Manila. For six months, I've known that Hoodlum's ship sank in July 2014, but with a different captain at the helm. This was just a month before the video went viral. 
I want to find out how and why it went down. I've asked my friend Lugs to help me take a look at the Pingshin 101's last journey. Let's just go through this together because there are a couple things I need some verification on. Ready? Yep. Okay. As a former New Zealand Navy engineer, Lugs knows what it takes to sink a ship. So here's what I think it did. In July 2014, went past Diego Garcia, and then was intending to sail home all the way back to Taiwan. And in this spot right here, in the middle of the Indian Ocean, furthest away from Aceh, pretty far from Colombo, relatively far from Diego Garcia, on the 7th of July, 2014, it sank here, right? Yeah. This is the Australian Maritime Safety Agency, and they had a report of that the Ping Shin 101 suffered mechanical failure and that the crew was abandoning the vessel into life rafts. It depends what the mechanical failure was. Ships that lose power in heavy seas can capsize as they drift broadside to the current. Yet there's no talk of that in the report. You've had cases where ships have broken down with mechanical failure and they just get towed into a port. Yep. But there's a second report from the rescue ship. They said that this ship experienced flooding in the engine room. Would one of these things sink just because the engine room floods? Don't you think that's a bit weird? It is. It is. Because they always use the engine room as a safe room for pirate attacks, right? Yeah. Because you can lock you it can and lock seal it. You can lock it down, yeah. So it would be the same, right? It should be. Watertight. Yeah. And why would that rupture? They'll have to run aground. Or someone's done it on purpose. You mean someone's scuttling the ship? Yeah. I'm sure the rescuers only reported what the crew told them. But why the inconsistency? The Taiwanese then say in their official report that the Pingshin 101 grounded and started taking on water and sank. And I mean, this is where it sank, right here. And in this immediate area, the nearest landmass, the nearest place where there's even a reef for this thing to ground on was in Diego Garcia. And that's 470 nautical miles. Diego Garcia is a British territory that's home to a major US military base. It seems unlikely that the Ping Shin would come close enough to shore to run aground. And even if the Pingshin 101 grounded, is it feasible that they could have even sailed 470 nautical miles while taking on water? Yeah, there's no way. The loss of the 101 is important. It was the key physical link to the killings. Normally, a homicide scene would have forensics, fingerprints, DNA. In this case, we only have video. And even the ship it was recorded on has gone. I want to get a first-hand account of what happened. Thanks to Aldrin, the Ping Shin's cook, I've got a lead on a deckhand who was on board when it sank. The only problem is he lives in the middle of hostile territory. Do you see someone? No. We've got eyes on us. Do you think that they deliberately sunk the vessel? What do you think could happen to me if I keep digging, if I try to go further here with this? I'm looking into the sinking of the Ping Shin 101, which went down in unclear circumstances. So now I'm back in the Philippines. Well, right now it's really dangerous. We're in central Luzon, and Luzon has always been a stronghold for the New People's Army. They're an armed rebel group, and it's pretty easy to get a gun here in the Philippines. There's a high level of violence, so we're just trying to be a little bit careful. I'm on my way to talk to Aljon, 
a deckhand who was on board. But the trip is challenging. The New People's Army raises funds through kidnap and extortion. It's killed American soldiers and abducted Filipino police officers. If we run into any rebels, as foreigners, there could be problems. John doesn't want to show his face, but he says it's safe to talk in his backyard, where his neighbors will keep a lookout. Is this, um, is that your ship? Yes, sir. Patient went on, sir. And you were on board right up until the time it sank? Yes, sir. Walk me through from when the Pinkshin 101 left Colombo port to when it sank. So the old crew were taken off. Then the captain and the bosun left. So then another captain, your new captain, came on. Yes, sir. Hoodlum was not on the Pinkshin 101 when it sank. A confidential informant slipped me the crew list, naming the new skipper as Captain Chen. This is your captain yes, here, yeah? Second captain, sir. Second captain. Yes. How many crew in total now are on board Pingshin 101? Supply <laughs> You left port with only 20 crew, which is 10 too short to fish. Yes, sir. So then what happened? You went, you went out to sea. I was in the room, sir. I didn't have much time because I was in the room. I was in the room. I was in the room, sir. He said that I was in the room. Then I was in the room. 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 hours Tell me about the captain and the engineer. Did they look concerned? Did they look scared? Bang real clean set. Para alam, pagkaka alam ko talagang ano yung sinadya sir. You think that they deliberately sunk the vessel? Sadya sir. That's an incredible allegation, if true. But there's no proof linking it to Hoodlum or the shootings. I have one last crew member from the Ping Shin to talk to. I met Art before. Last time, he gave up the nickname of the 101's captain. Ang dati ming kapitan doon yung Hoodlum. Hoodlum. Yun lang ang pinangalan ko sa kanya dahil matang. The way he behaved in the last time I met him, very edgy, he was very concerned. I can't understand why that would be, but it's just bugging me too much. So I'm going to go back there and I'm going to get him to explain to me again what happened, what was the process leading up to the sinking of the Ping Shin 101. I feel like Art is holding something back. Again, he insists on no cameras. Thank you for letting me see you again. No problem. I have a couple more questions. 
the sinking of the Pingxin 101. It's, it's really bothering me. Do you remember your last trip before the ship sank? Yes. Then they started working. Sabi ng kapitan, magluto ka na. Nagluto. Tapos sabi niya, bilisan mo lang magluto dahil mapapatayin din mamaya, sabi niya. Di e, nung nag-ano na ako, nagluluto ako, di ko pa na luluto yung pagkain. Ay, pumutok na sa baba. Tubig nang lumalabas. When the Pingxin 101 sank, did the owner give you anything? Did he compensate you? Tandaan din na binigay, pero pabali noon. Sabi nila, bali. Kung ng mga pulis, huwag kayong magsasalitang... No, Sino nagsabi nila? Yung kapitan namin. What Art is alleging is huge, but it's only an allegation. If I can get to Chen and the 101's owner, Ping, I may find out exactly why it sunk. I return to Taiwan with a new goal. When the Pingxin 101 sank, its crew were rescued by the bulk carrier, the Sam Tiger, which took them to Colombo, Sri Lanka. And within the crew was this man here. His name is Captain Chen. He was a relief captain. He was brought on three weeks before the ship was sunk and replaced Captain Hoodlum. The owner was Mr. Li Ping, who is both apparently a Taiwanese and a Chinese national. got local contacts hunting for Chen. I'm going after Ping. My investigator, Noah, gives me a couple of addresses to check out. OK, why don't we try this address, Mr. Ping? But this could very well be the, um, the commercial address. Maybe he runs his office out of here. Ping is 67 years old. He's no spring chicken. This was taken. 12 years ago. I'm sure he's aged quite a bit, but generally, this is what he looks like. We're getting close. I'm wondering if Ping knows anything about what happened on his ship and what happened to it. This is the street here, right? Yeah, over there. We'll cut right. It's our dress. This is here? Okay, hold, 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 stop, stop, stop. All right, so one, two, three, four. So he's up on the fourth floor. Just gonna have a look. She's not friendly to talk about anything. She says she doesn't want to talk. Yeah, she just say she's busy. And... So I don't really buy that one. I'm sure they are. Do you see someone? Huh? We've got eyes on us. I see. Well, why don't we ask um, if someone else is, who lives here? Or maybe come down. Just... Oh, I... Hi. This picture here. Does he look familiar? Have you seen him before? No. No. Okay. And he is He's working at MRT. Kaohsiung MRT. Okay, but um, but he's lived at this address for a while. Yeah, yeah. For a long time. Okay, and he hasn't seen this gentleman. 
No? Neighbor. No? Okay. Alright, well, let's get back in. I showed him Ping's passport photo and the name. Said he's never seen him. So that to me would tell me that it doesn't add up. He's definitely not at that address. I move on to the next address that Noah gave me. Three, four, five, six, six. Here. Six is here. Six, six. Okay. Who's here? Yes. Yeah. This is complex. All right. Well, it's a bit more believable, isn't it? His flat's up on the 15th floor? Yes, 15th floor. Nice lobby, security with CCTV, three people there. This is definitely his Kaohsiung residence. Question is, timing it right to find him when he's here. We can easily do that, right? Yes. OK. One of my local investigators keeps eyes on the property, waiting for Ping to return home. The next day, I decide to head over to the port. Sounds like we've got something on Mr. Ping. What we have is all the new passport numbers, the records. Uh, where is he right now? Uh, the status uh, will be... Uh, he's now in Shanghai. OK. It's good that you found that out about Ping. It was my worst fear as well, but um, it's not the end. It's just a setback. Yes. OK. Thank you, sir. I'll speak soon, yeah? OK, bye. Bye. Before going to China, I'd need local assets to track Ping. But because he's Taiwanese and not on the Chinese passport database, it'll take months. but I still have Chen. I head back to the hotel, hoping for better news. I have bad news for you. My police associates just told me that Captain Chen left Taiwan via China Airlines Flight 581 from Kaohsiung to Shanghai on the 27th of September, two days ago. Unbelievable. Yeah, scheduled departure from Kaohsiung to Shanghai, and it left at 7 AM. The local investigator is suggesting that that our presence alerted Chen. I'm trying to figure out if there's anything that may have triggered it. Did he panic and make a runner? So all three on my list are beyond my reach. The 
bad feeling I woke up with today has got a whole lot worse. This could be bad luck. Or not. Why is no one willing to say anything about it? Ping, the owner of the 101. Chen, the second captain at the time it sank. And Wang, a.k.a. Captain Hoodlum. The three men most able to fill in the blanks in my investigation are out of the country. Over a month now, I've been trying to set up a meeting with a man from a local Kaohsiung fishing association. Someone who can finally give me some answers as to what the hell went down here in Kaohsiung. We've set up the meeting here in this underground parking garage. And I'm not sure what to expect. The meeting will take place in a white car. I've been told to find it and wait. My local assets say that this man is very well placed to know about Taiwan's maritime industry. But he won't give his name or show his face on camera. And that makes me dubious. Thank you for agreeing to meet me. Do you think that people know that I'm around here investigating? Do you think they know in the port what I'm doing? Well, I have to catch the people behind this, and I'm not going to stop. So I need to know why is nobody doing anything in this city? in this country about this case. And I guess the fishing industry is sick too. Why have they not investigated a single thing in this case? Pressure from whom? No, not really, because I need to know exactly what happened. And I need your help. Yes, I will go. It's, this is really important. I don't know this guy. I don't know if he's telling the truth. Where's his evidence? Why is no one willing to say anything about it? And from whom? Who paid them? A powerful criminal organization. Is he talking about the Taiwanese mafia? And the mafia is intimidating the fishing sector, the government. They're intimidating everyone. But what you're suggesting is the government is afraid of doing anything about this. Did you get paid off?
There is no proof to back any of it up. But Taiwanese mafia groups are active as far afield as Japan, Australia, South Africa, and the United States. They're known as triads, and they have a dangerous reputation. Taiwanese police brutally beaten and killed by gangsters. Mr. Cho also used a beer bottle to break the fingers on the man's right hand. In addition to the M4, three small handguns were also confiscated along with 150 rounds of ammunition. We see more than 50 gangsters surround him and beat him with knives and sticks. He was taken to the hospital where he later died from his injuries. If organized crime is that integrated into the fishing fleets, into the industry here, maybe I'm taking on the mafia. Am I willing to go that far? And now I have to spend the rest of my time in Kaohsiung wondering, wondering who's watching me. Okay, all right, see you soon. Bye, bye-bye. A few days after the meeting with the whistleblower, my local asset hooks me up with someone who claims he's ex-police. He wants to speak off the record. This man looks a bit weird. He says it's important. Can we go up this road here? It may be paranoia, but I don't want to risk being tailed. We've got a police vehicle on us. Go straight, please. I'd just like to avoid any law enforcement. Let's just wait for this vehicle to go by. If you don't know them, you can't trust them. Did the police ever investigate this case? The men on these ships flying a Taiwan flag open fire, killing these men. And that means, jurisdictionally, with the Taiwan flag, what happened on this ship happened in this country. And this is what should have been investigated. And I don't understand why it hasn't. So the, the general gist of this is that anyone who wants to look into what these boats have done, these boats from Taiwan, the token line is back off or something will happen to you. Does it not smell like a cover-up? Do you think I should be worried if I keep pushing this, if I keep investigating this case here in Taiwan? What do you think could happen to me if I keep digging, if I try to go further here with this? 
，有两种方式，一种就是跟你成为好朋友，一种就就永远不想再见到。I don't have any proof of triad involvement or a cover-up. I think it's pretty obvious that I'm done here in Taiwan. Maybe it's time to take this case elsewhere because I don't think I'll get anywhere. There's one last place where I might get the authorities to listen. I leave Taiwan for possibly my final journey to the Seychelles. I have a slim chance of persuading Seychelles police to open a case. Technically, they have an obligation to investigate because one of the longliners in the video, the Chuni 628, carried a Seychelles flag. That means it comes under their jurisdiction. I've already contacted the police. The handover is to be behind closed doors. I've put together a file on my laptop. Now the whole investigation, all of my work. Is contained on this one USB stick. This is the moment that I've been waiting for. After months and months of investigating, I finally am prepared to hand over my evidence and intelligence package to a law enforcement agency. And all I can hope now is that they will officially pick up this case, and finally, this is going to go somewhere, and justice will be served. Takes two hours. But finally, I'm out of there. They accepted my evidence, and they're optimistic. They want to take this seriously. They want to take this on, and that's just the best feeling, because it means that all this work, all this searching, is actually going to mean something. The Seychelles police have given me their word that they will investigate. But until I see action, all I have is a promise. So if the Seychelles really follow through with this, that means that Captain Hoodlum will finally get an international arrest warrant. And although he's out there right now, beyond the reach of law, he's going to have to come to shore one day, and that's when he's going to get nabbed. My investigation has taken me into risky situations. Report of an IED、um, involving military. It's pretty eerie down here. And confronted dangerous people. But I still haven't brought closure. To the families of the victims. Even when someone does bring a case like this to the authorities, nothing is done. On the high seas, violence continues largely unchecked. Deadly altercations break out aboard vessels, and it's only a matter of time when news of the next killing spree surfaces. A 
Filipino fishermen are found dead in a shooting by suspected pirates. The attack occurred Monday night, January 9th, when assailants boarded a fishing boat and opened fire on the crew members. But this case is just... It's a perfect example of how messy it is out there in international waters. You've got Taiwanese and Seychelles flagged longliners. Chinese captains, you've got Filipino and Vietnamese and Indonesian deckhands. You've got Pakistani and Sri Lankan shooters. And then you've got Iranian boats and Iranian and Pakistani victims. I mean, no wonder it's just a headache to look at and to comprehend. Jurisdictionally, it's just such a nightmare. And that's why these oceans are truly lawless. No way. Good morning. Now I've got his coordinates. I've been able to identify the longliner that Captain Hoodlum is currently on. Problem is, he's turned his transponder off, and every morning for 64 days, I've been checking, waiting for his transponder to finally ping again. And this is now gonna be my chance to confront Captain Hoodlum and get him to say his version of events on the day of the killings.